Oh, 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 okay. That's what we doing. Okay, that's what we doing. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to a can dip with cat. Uh, just starting this video off, I already know it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a whole entire mess. And it gets so bad. So this is my first drink of the day. Probably going to be maybe even be my last one. That's that's how it is. That's how it is. Cause Sunday, man, I must behave myself. But uh, we're talking candid with cat. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Please do subscribe to the channel and also click the notification bell if you like my videos, any of my videos. I would really, really appreciate that. It helps me, it goes a really long way. And also another thing, if you haven't subscribed to my Instagram, if you are not following me on my Instagram, please, please, please follow me on Instagram. I am a thousand away from 10K subscribers. And this will help me a lot in terms of working with brands, in terms of uh, getting more features on Instagram. So I really, really would appreciate it if you could go give me a follow on Instagram. You don't even have to follow me. Follow me for real if you don't want, want to. But definitely, please just give me a little bit of a follow on Instagram. I really would appreciate that. It would help go a long, long way. Now, if you do follow me on Instagram, you will know what the topic of today is. Of course, you'll also see it in the description box below. We're going to be talking about an ONS, which is a one night stand. So about a week ago, no, not about a week ago, about three or four days ago, I put up a little thing on Instagram again. And I asked you guys to share some of your one night stand stories with me. But also not only that, I asked you guys to just give me your opinions on what you think about one night stands. And is it as taboo as it used to be? How do people feel about it? Is a woman having a one night stand? commonly over and over again is she owning her own narrative is she you know living her life the way that she wants to live her life it's is is it something that's frowned upon and is or is it not like let's share let's talk about it let's be about it and of course I got a lot of responses and thank you guys for actually following on and actually choosing to interact in my Candid with Cat videos because that's what I want it to be about. I don't want to sit here and share a story or whatever. I want us to share our stories and actually share our opinions and all of that. So I'm going to pull up what you guys said on Instagram and see what your thoughts are on one night stands. And of course, we have a lot. So we're going to talk about that today. And I'm like, mm. Okay, so I might share a story or two. We'll see how that goes. Maybe not. Uh, but personally, I feel like growing up, you would always hear about these girls that were a little bit older than you. Maybe I was like around high school or whatever. And there was always this one girl in our neighborhood that was notorious for one night stands. And it, 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 it was just stories that we would hear all the time like she came back with this guy and then he left the following morning or whatever and then we'd never see him again and that kind of thing and i won't even lie i was one of those people who frowned upon one night stands i was just like nah this is nasty why would you want to do that to yourself have some respect who the hell are you why do you do that, that, that? and the funny thing is i would always frown on a one night stand when it came to women and I would never frown on a one night stand when it came to men. If a man would do a one night stand, or which a whole lot of them do, let's be honest. They just meet somebody, they sleep with them, they go. And, and, and they're okay. They're living the best life. They don't have problems. I never used to frown on that. But I would frown on a woman having a one night stand. Like, why? Doesn't she have respect for herself? Blah, blah, blah. I was, I was those people. I was those people who felt that way. Until I started doing it in my 20s, early 20s. Until I started doing it, I was just like, oh, I'm living my life. I'm single, so what? And I want to, you know. Um, but of course, with one night stands, it's very, very risky because 
a lot of the time one night stands it's 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 either you do it because you want to do it you enjoy doing it it's fun and who's gonna tell you what to do about you and about your life nobody gonna tell you nothing a lot of the time um which i remember this is what i used to do i would do it in retaliation to something so if i just gone through a breakup i would have a number of one night stands not a number man maybe like two or three yana one night stands just to just ease myself into the dating phase um so i would always do that i would have like a one night stand yana there here and there um because i'm retaliating to something or i feel like gone through a breakup living my best life i'm single again so what I don't care. I don't have to see you again tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. It's fun. I can just not attach and just do my thing. And for some time it was enjoyable. <laughs> for some time it was enjoyable until it got to the point where I started looking at myself differently. Me, not in a bad way, but in a way like, are you doing this because you really want to do it? Or are you just doing this because yeah why not you know like i'm owning my narrative which is uh, something that um, a lot of people seem to be doing nowadays but you can own your narrative and you can own who you are but at the same time don't don't be foul about your life don't do snacks things that you know just typically are snacks i'm not talking about one night stands only here don't do snacks things like going around and sleeping with people's boyfriends or whatever and then calling it you owning your own narrative. But, uh, but uh, no, you're gonna own your own narrative. Then own it, knowing that you don't you don't feel bad about what you're doing, whatever. If you don't feel bad about the fact that you're going around sleeping with people's men and women and all of that, that says a lot about your character. But if you don't have a problem with the fact that after a relationship you're single you you're not tied down to anyone you're not messing about with people's husbands and wives and whatever and you still want to own your narrative then absolutely own your narrative the with me it got to a point where i was just like but why am i doing this because i just genuinely feel more of an attachment and i enjoy being intimate to someone when they are my person not necessarily when they are not and in in, in actual fact i get very uncomfortable um sharing parts of my bo my body sharing my physical naked in all its glory because it's glorious <laughs> naked in all its glory to someone i barely know right in the moment when you're drinking and you're having fun and you've been out and blah 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 in the moment sure Sure, it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's whatever. But the following morning, I would be plagued, literally plagued with a feeling of guilt. And I don't understand. I, it's, I'm not guilty because I am with someone and then I go and I sleep with someone else. No, I'm guilty because this is not what I do. This is not me. So I'm guilty to myself. I feel guilty that I would do this to myself. You, you, you get what I'm saying? So eventually at some point I was just like, nah, this is not for you. Don't do it no more. Um, I mean, if you're going to sleep with someone, at least no, that's not for you. know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> I just, I ended up, I ended up feeling that, you know what, it's just not me, but I also, I commend the women who can do it and like, I'm a sharp, like I'm a grand, like she's owning her own narrative, that's great, and she feels like, listen, you're not going to tell me what to do about my body, my sexuality, my life, and I totally get that. But I do also get at the same time that it doesn't work for everybody. And there are some people who still frown upon. Um, mm -hmm, that's thunder. There are still some people who frown upon one night stands. Crazy why they would in the 21st century. But eh, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Say, let, let's see what you guys say about it, right? So I'm not going to mention names because, again, it is people's experiences. And these are sensitive things to be like, this person then did this um so one of the ladies says don't do it if you have a heart i caught real feelings one time and i had the one time i had a one night stand never again don't do it like for me i mean you can have a heart and still have a one night stand i feel like if you are sensitive maybe this is what she's alluding to if you're sensitive if you feel like uh you know, you're, you're, you're easily going to be hurt or offended because you're going to come across some hectic things. 
in a one night stand. You know, somebody's gonna take out your pants and then you're gonna be like, or somebody's gonna take out your pants and then you're gonna be like, <laughs> what? You know, it's gonna be a bunch of reactions with a one night stand, okay? But um, I think she means that if you're sensitive and you're prone to catching feelings for people, uh, you could have a banging one night stand. It could be the best sex of your life. Yeah, understand? And then that person don't want shit to do with you the next day. And you're sitting there thinking, just love me. No, you don't, you don't love, you're not loving him, you're loving the sex. You're loving his sex. Yeah, understand. So I feel like what she's saying is that don't, don't, if you easily catch feelings and if you're easily uh, offended or if you're easily, um, not triggered, man, This if you're easily just uh, reactionary to a lot of things, maybe a one night stand is not for you. Because I feel like a one night stand is that, you know, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm letting go, I'm letting loose, I'm living my best life. A one night stand is t purely about that. It's not, uh, do not attach with a one night stand. If, if it happens that you do and you both do, then hey, that's one thing. But don't attach when you know that. <laughs> Another lady says, Naki wiki shem. I don't think I, it would work out. I love companionship too much. Um... I think with a with a one night stand, it's yeah, it's definitely not about companionship per se. It's just about having the feelings that you're having. O testi, unoriu, serapos, sauti, testi. Okay, and that's that's cool. That's what it's about. It's about a physical. You just want that physical connection. It has nothing to do about whether this person uh, is going to take care of you one day and have you some kids and give you some kids and do this and do this and do this. That's what it's about. It's about today and we out. Or it's about this moment, two hours, and we out. That's it. We're not, we're not talking about... Uh, white picket fence and babies are just so thunder. We're not talking about white, white picket fence and babies here. We are talking about in out dealing hour. That's what it's about. That's what a one night stand is about. So yeah, it's about owning your sexuality, wanting to have fun, unattached, and living it up. And that's what it's about. So yes, if you're somebody who values companionship, like me, I tried the one night stand life, it didn't quite work. I mean, there was this one night. <laughs> I had recently moved out of home and uh, I was staying in my own little two bedroom place in a complex, very tiny, very nice, very cute, very me. And I feel like I was like achieving, I was living and I wasn't in a relationship at the time. And uh, you know, I, went out with my mates one night and then when we <laughs> i met somebody there but now the thing is i didn't want to quite show my mates that i'm meeting this person there and whatever and we've exchanged numbers i didn't want to talk about it i knew that i'd be going home by myself and all of that so i was just like oh hey we exchanged numbers and i said to him no um don't ever do this i i, I regret the fact that i even did this because i didn't know this person from a bar of soap but I wanted to, it to be in my space to be comfortable. So I gave him my number and I said, when I leave with the girls, I'll contact you, we'll talk, blah, blah, blah. So I left with the girls and everybody went their separate ways. And I texted him because the drink had already taken effect and I was feeling kind of sassy, okay? I was feeling kind of sexy and all of that. So I called him and I was like, listen, uh, if you're keen, <laughs> <laughs> the slash. So I was like, listen, um, if you can, why don't you come over? Come come through. Let's hang out. And of course he's keen. What do you mean? So he says the best he says back that on the phone he says, uh, yeah, I'm keen, of course, whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'll send you my details. So I sent him my details. He comes through fine. Okay? This man Kore, it's a crime. For, for certain people to look this good. You see how Michali looks? You see how Michali looks? Michali is a crime. It's a crime to look that beautiful. It's a mess. Why are you doing this to us? Why are you showing us that we ain't shit? 
just by looking at us, just by looking at the camera and smiling. Ah, oh, come on. So this guy, it was a crime for him to be this good looking. Comes in, fine, no problem. Hey, what's up? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, we start making out. It's great. It's going sp spectacularly. In my head, I'm like, you're really doing this. Oh my God, you're really doing this. This was the first time I did this, right? So I'm like, oh my God, you're really doing this. So I do the thing. And then we move the party and we take the party to the boudoir. So we get to the boudoir, yeah. Getting excited, a a a a a. And uh, items of clothing are removed. And when the items of clothing are removed, uh, your friend takes off his uh, his his. <laughs> takes off his item of clothing, his BVD. He takes off his underwear and never in my life had I seen such a clean shaven, like clean, like baby's butt, like clean shaved area. Not even a smidgen of hair, nothing. And not only that, I don't only see that, but I also see something I cannot work with. I, I knew that no matter how much I tried, and if the guy is here, he's ready, okay? But to me, it's like, ooh, where? <laughs> I found the fact that there was no hair, one, disturbing. I don't know. I, I, I feel like women do that. We clean shave right throughout, but I feel like men, you know, trim, sharp you know and and that that was amazing but he was full on clean like nothing was there and I was just like it actually it was so bad that not it wasn't just the size that was small I'm sorry <laughs> but I'm not sorry it wasn't just the size, but it was also the fact he was clean shaven that actually put me off. I didn't like it. I felt like, why isn't there a bit of, we must see a bit of her there. And there was nothing. So I was really, really put off that I actually asked him to leave. Uh, I said, listen, I don't know. I switched off immediately. And I said, listen, I don't know what's going on. Um, I think it's the alcohol. I'm, I'm really, no, I'm, I'm sorry that I led you up to this far. I'm really sorry. He's like, oh man, are you sure? Okay, no, we can, we can just, um, we can just relax, you know, chat and whatever. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I'm actually, I'm actually not feeling well. I need you to leave. I was feeling fine. I was just litty, but I was feeling great. And I was just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not feeling well. I really need you to leave. I'm so sorry for asking you to come out all this way, but... He's like, oh man, are you sure? Do I need to go to the garage, get you something? Do you need any pills or whatever? I'm like, nah, I just need you to get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Question is, is it with a stranger or blind date or someone you know? Now the thing is, I love this because uh, one night stands are often with somebody you meet in, in, in that moment. Like if you're at a party and you do something and then you do something and they disappear. But a lot of the time, I like this question because um, with me, it, it could have been like one of the instances, it was someone I knew, but I hadn't slept with. And then I'd slept with them and I hated it so much that I was just like, nah. And I cut them off completely. All and generally, the person was very nice. The person, this person was okay, man. He was right in life. Until, and then it was just like, mm -mm, mm -mm. you know, when someone was going right instead of left, going down instead of up, like, you know, going east instead of west. It was, it was, it was just, no. But that's a very good question. And the person who said this question, I kind of have a crush on her. It's a girl. It's a girl. And I kind of have a crush on her. Okay. Um, I've had a few. Oh, she continues to say, I have, I've had a few one night stands and I'm good. <laughs> Horror stories, I tell you. I mean, some of them are quite tragic. Okay. Let me get into some of yours. Let's see. 
Uh, One, it was with a colleague. We got wasted. In the morning, he wanted more. And when I saw how... Why did that problem your size alone? What's wrong with you people? What? Why are you? Why are you the people with the size? Okay, let's not even lie. Size matters, guys. I don't care who says what. Size matters. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and be like, hi, Mara. If he can do it right, wait. If he can work it, if he's got no, I sabwamaka, sabwamaka. I hope no one tells my father that I said this shit. When I saw how tiny it was, I asked him to go home. We never spoke of that night again. Yet the first time, that, that evening, that evening, you did it. And then when the poor guy wanted more and you were sober-minded, now all of a sudden you realize, hurry, it's small. Listen, this is someone else. Listen, the best and sometimes the worst sex. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Um, I feel like, yeah. I feel like if you want to experiment or you're in a point in your life where you just don't want a relationship, but you do want intimacy, you do want, you are allowed to have needs and you are allowed to want to be serviced. So if you want to be serviced, get it. Get it without the attachment of a relationship, without the attachment of ever having to speak to that person ever again. Get it. But don't, don't, don't forget we're in the middle of a Panasonic. So just randomly just uh, getting it on with somebody and then having to lock lips and lock bodily fluids. Don't do it. Unless, unless you're stamper. If you're sure within yourself, then do it. Um, I think they've stopped being taboo. Women are naturally taking charge of their sexual narrative. Absolutely. That's what I said in the beginning of the video that I feel like that's what I said in the beginning of the video, that I feel like women are actually taking charge of their sexual narrative and they're owning themselves and owning their bodies. More importantly, they are owning what they are about. So definitely, I feel like it's not as taboo. Um, I used to do one night stands when I was going through a breakup and honestly, I'd never do that to myself again. Same with me. Every time I was going through a breakup and wasn't quite ready to jump into another relationship, I would definitely have fun with somebody and then boom, boom, pow, and then, mm, mm. Um, another case in my mid twenties, there was this guy and he was so cute and I thought, oh my goodness, this guy is it. And he, everything about him was really, really nice. Everything about him. And then I um, asked him to come over for some Netflix and chill. There wasn't Netflix at that time. Uh, but I uh, asked him to come over to chill and hang out. And uh, <laughs> you know how they are typically with men, okay? Men normally don't really say much. You'll hear the noises or you'll hear the... <laughs> You'll hear the grunting or you'll hear whatever you hear, but they don't normally really say much. There will be those ones there who dirty talk and whatever and blah, blah. But typically, a lot of the time, not so much. It's women that are often more vocal than men are, right? So in this particular uh, <laughs> one night stand situation, this dude, you know, soprano, high pitch voice, like, ah. That and it wasn't only that, but even the talking, the the pitch, the voice, the vocal pitch was just like, but it felt like I was talking to someone that was like really young and oh, <laughs> completely switched me off. At this point, I'm thinking, you don't sound like this when we're talking normally. Talking, why the hell are you like pitching now? And you're high, you're up there, you're like, oh, what? What's going on? What did I do? Melanian Zeni. Like it literally shocked me so much. Never mind that the the that the cheddar cheddar bang bang was really mediocre. But I was just like, but on the vocal see vessel soprano no. You and alone. After that I was just like, mm -mm, nope. Nope. Can't be nope. Can't do it. No, no. Um, this lady says, I've never had one, but I'm all for it. Your body, your rules, and your right to feel pleasured your way. Absolutely. Couldn't agree anymore. Couldn't agree anymore. Uh, done that, and I'm so glad I did, because why not, right? Exactly. Why not? 
Take charge of your life and own your sexual narrative and own yourself and do what you want to do and live it. Why not? I feel like it's fun. It's part of the growing pains. It's a way to find out if ho is life or not. Uh, is it? Is it a way to find out if ho is life? I don't know. Mm -mm, no. I, I, no, 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 no. I'm too much of a germaphobe to trust people's bad mouths, beds and mouths without knowing them first. I absolutely agree. I'm not a germaphobe, but I'm quite neat. And I feel like uh, in my cases, I owned the narrative in that I chose for it to be at my place because then I had control and I knew what I would do if things went south and I knew what I would blah, blah, blah. I knew that there was always someone who knew that I, there was somebody in the house with me, I would always inform any one of my friends and all of that. So yes, if they didn't hear from me, I owned the narrative by having it in my home so that I had control of the situation. But then again, we all know, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I owe myself a one night stand, one that will make, one that will put me in fetal position. <laughs> Listen to me. You don't want a one night stand that's going to put you in a fetal position. Let me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because then it'll have been that good to put you in such a position that you're going to find it very hard to detach. And I'm not quite sure you'll be able to manage. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't believe in one night stands and I never will. If I'm sleeping with you, it means I'm in love, period. And sure, each to their own. Uh, you don't have to believe in one night stands, but don't impose your uh, opinions on uh, friends or don't uh, make them feel shitty if they partake in one night stands. I mean, for some people, it's not a big deal. We have fun. We live it up. Let's enjoy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's, it, it might not be for everybody, for sure. But one thing we're not going to do is impose our uh, standards on our friends or our family members or anybody that we know that partakes in one night stands because each to their own, you know. As much as for you, you have to be in love to sleep with somebody, that's cool. For other people, not so much. Other people just do it to ruin people's lives other people just sleep with people because they are just being naughty other people sleep with other people's people so it's just a mess you know some people just don't care uh how many what could happen how many lives could be ruined or whatever they just enjoy sleeping with people and it doesn't matter what their situation is so kind of crazy um, this video is long enough. I think this video is going to be maybe around 20 something minutes long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this version of Candid with Cat. I will be back with another one. I do know that you guys really, really enjoy these videos. So I'm going to do more of them. My beer is almost done and I am going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely click like, subscribe, click the bell do all the things and we're working our way up towards 20,000 subscribers. Let's do it. Let's do it. Please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.